Russell guilty, he faces up to 16 years behind bars and a $1 million fine. Holding his wife's hand, a pale, frail-looking Saul Walkler fought his way through a crush of photographers this afternoon to enter the federal courthouse in Trenton. It was his first public appearance since his arrest last November, when Walkler was arrested on charges of waging a campaign of threats and harassment against Manhattan socialite Joy Silverman, her 14-year-old daughter, and Silverman's new boyfriend, New Jersey attorney David Sampson. Walkler kissed his wife briefly before standing with his attorneys, who entered a not guilty plea to the five-count federal indictment. Among the allegations, Walkler is accused of using his staff to open a file on David Sampson, posing as a private investigator and sending an anonymous letter to the U.S. attorney in Newark claiming that the kidnappers of Exxon executive Sidney Riso were also blackmailing Sampson and Silverman. Then, Walkler's attorneys announced that today they are filing a notice of intent to raise an insanity defense at trial. Walkler's attorneys had wanted to avoid a trial, but prosecutors rejected their offer that Walkler plead guilty by reason of insanity and escape jail time by agreeing to perform community service and undergo counseling. Can you explain to us your rationale? Why do you believe that he was insane? The doctors say the man has a mental problem. Your doctors? Our doctors. Yeah. What about the prosecution stuff? Well, we haven't seen their report. Thank you. Now, the burden of proof on the insanity defense is on the defendant. Walker's attorneys will have to prove that because of his psychiatric illness, he was unable to appreciate the wrongfulness of his acts. That's the standard. It's a very tough one. The judge has set a trial date of June 1st. Plenty of time for both sides to get their expert witnesses in line. Live from Trenton, Sarah Wallace, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Sarah. Six men and one woman are in the running to replace Walkler as chief judge of the New York State Court of Appeals. Governor Cuomo says he hopes to announce his choice for the job tomorrow. And that person will, of course, have to be confirmed by the New York State Senate. In a Long Island courtroom today, it was a case of $40 million missing from the Revere Armored Car Company, three times as much as had been originally estimated. Several banks and many businesses came to federal court in Uniondale today to find out when and if their missing money would be brought back. Investigators found money in hampers and on the floors when they went to Revere's vaults after learning that $85 million should have been there. Revere's owners have been arrested on charges of theft. Well, take a ride on the West Side Highway tonight, speaking of theft, and you'll see that many of the lights are out. Someone's been stealing the copper wire that carries electric curtain, current. And, of course, the lights don't work without electric current. So the highway's dark, eerie, dangerous. Doug Johnson is on the highway in the dark. Doug? Bill, once again tonight, driving here on the Henry Hudson Parkway will be far more dangerous than it ought to be because most of the street lights are out. The problem seems to be imaginative crooks, and the city doesn't quite know what to do about them. For several miles of the upper Henry Hudson Parkway, there are no street lights. It makes it a very dangerous place to drive. The city realizes that, but doesn't quite know what to do about it. About two years ago, the city had to replace the copper wiring that runs to the lights because thieves had stolen it. The cost of replacement was about half a million dollars. The city then placed transformers near the tops of poles, but that didn't stop the crooks. They climbed up the poles, cut off the power, and pulled the wire out of these boxes along the highway. The city went out and bought these tamper-proof bolts. You can't open them unless you have this wrench provided by the manufacturer. The thieves simply took a sharp tool, drove a hole in there, then they took a screwdriver and a hammer, and then just drove it around in circles like that and got it open. We've done everything possible. We've literally tried everything we can. Uh, we're at the point now where we are going to bury wires in cement, literally. Two feet of cement, so they can't get it out. When the thieves cut off the power, it puts out the lights for a couple of miles. And from one box, they can pull out the wire for several hundred yards in either direction. A couple of years ago, police caught thieves with stolen wire, but they couldn't indict them because they couldn't prove where the wire came from. Apparently, New York has such brazen or uh, ingenious thieves that they are just out to despoil the resources of the city and waste the taxpayers' money. We have to get the highway lit. The reason the crooks go to all this trouble, apparently, is that after they take the covering from the copper wire, the copper sells at about 70 cents a pound, which doesn't sound like much. But the problem is that over the past 
two years, about two years to 18 months, these crooks have stolen 12,000 feet of it. We're live on the West Side Highway, Doug Johnson, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Thank you, Doug. We all have good reason to be afraid of things that go bump in the night or in the daylight, especially if the bump makes little pieces or even big pieces fall off our cars. So it is, the city says, this is the worst year in memory for potholes. Big and small, they seem to lurk on every highway. The city's hard-pressed to pay the cost of filling them. Drivers are fed up with the cost of hitting them. All of a sudden, I felt like my front wheels were going to fall off. I hit a pothole, and I heard a bang, and out comes my headlight. I love potholes in New York. <laughs> potholes that fills not? now will have to be ripped up again. That's because the filler the city uses with cold asphalt is only good for temporary repairs. A report from federal prosecutors tonight concludes that ice and snow on the wings caused last year's crash of U.S. Air Flight 405 at LaGuardia Airport. 27 of the 51 people on board the jet died when it veered and tumbled off the runway into Flushing Bay. The report on the crash says the pilot may have tried to take off before the plane was moving fast enough to overcome the icing problem on the wings. Problems today on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. An ammonia leak forced nearly 100 people out into the cold. Firefighters from the Hazardous Material Unit were called in to dispose of the toxic material. And fire officials traced the leak to a copy machine located on the first floor of the 13-story building near Columbus Avenue. No reports of any serious injuries. Well, at 9 o'clock tonight, President Clinton goes on TV with some details about his economic plan, and it will hit close to home. An energy tax, the income tax rate up from 31 to 36 percent, a 10 percent surtax on taxable income over $250,000, a Medicare payroll tax on all earnings, and those are only the things we're pretty sure about. Big problems were a big program, and Harriet Martin went up to Hyde Park, New York, where FDR lived, lived to see how Clinton's problems might compare with Franklin D. Roosevelt's problems and programs of 60 years ago. They weren't talking about Happy Meals here at the McDonald's in Hyde Park, but they were talking about Happy Times and the upcoming visit from President Bill Clinton on Friday. I think it's great. Yeah, it's a big boost for Hyde Park. I just think it's great. I like the meal. By coming here to Hyde Park, the home of FDR, the White House is hoping to draw some sort of parallel between the tough economic problems inherited by FDR back in the 1930s and those inherited by President Clinton in the 90s. It just seems so natural to me that they would come to Hyde Park. I mean, I, I think this, this president is, is really on the same wavelength, if you will, that Franklin Roosevelt was on. But the president may have a tough sell when he holds a town meeting here at the Haviland Middle School, part of which was built as a work fair project under FDR. And not everyone seems interested in seeing the president. No way. I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> this is a tough crowd. In fact, every time FDR ran for president, Dutchess County voters went for someone else. Over the past two years, unemployment has doubled here, largely because of the downsizing by IBM. So, selling an economic plan in this town could be tricky. I'm hoping that it will be a good ep economic plan, although I doubt it. Uh, from what I've read in the paper already, uh, I think it's going to be another bust. And as for the campaign promise of not raising taxes for the middle class, many here seemed resigned that that was all campaign rhetoric. If he makes the decision that taxes are going to be raised, then I have to abide by that. Let's say that. In Hyde Park, Harry Martin, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. And you'll be able to see the president's speech to the Congress and the country here on Channel 7 tonight at 9 o'clock. When we come back in just a moment, these children do not have AIDS, but the lives of tens of thousands of New York City kids could be devastated by the deadly disease. So, amid hope for the best, many families are preparing for the worst. Living with AIDS, in our special report. I'm so excited! It's Toyota's first big sales event of the new year, and you'll get excited over all the new Corolla deals. Like an all-new lease deal of only $179 a month. That's a new Corolla with a standard driver's side airbag for $179 a month and no down payment. Let's get excited! It's a great time for you to get excited. And time for you to get to your Toyota dealer during Toyota's first big sales event of the new year. The new Weight Watchers program is much easier to stay on. Weight Watchers work. It works. I've lost seven pounds in four weeks. Four pounds. <laughs> Over five pounds. I lost eight pounds. Weight Watchers gave me my life back. Go to Weight Watchers. Join now and you can register for only 99 cents. For only 99 cents. 
Really? <laughs> Only 99 cents. Call now. If you follow the program, it really works. If I can do it. You can do it. What you don't know can cost you your house. Turn to Bloomberg News Radio, 1130 AM, the news that matters to you. What you don't know can cost you your kid's education. Turn to Bloomberg News Radio, 1130 AM, the news that matters to you. What you don't know can cost you your waste. They don't call them good old guys for nothing. Researchers say tonight that they've stopped the AIDS virus from reproducing in the test tube by attacking it with a combination of three drugs. This experimental therapy attacks an enzyme the AIDS virus needs to reproduce, and it may keep the virus from becoming drug resistant. Testing on humans starting this spring. AIDS has been with us now for a little bit more than 10 years, and in that time, it's become very much a part of our lives, increasingly. It's expected that more than 15,000 New Yorkers will come down with AIDS this year. Most of them will be minorities, and more and more of them will be women who, with their families, are living with AIDS. I want my child to be safe. I want my child to, I mean, as long as possible, okay? I want my child to be loved. Joyce Richard is kept going by a mother's unconditional love and doing what is best for her children. She doesn't have much longer to live, and she's already met the foster parents who will become family for her three-year-old son, Shati. You have to plan ahead, and then you can go on and rest, and that's what I'm going to do. Shati is only one of the 55,000 kids and young adults now expected to be orphaned by AIDS in New York City by the year 2000. A new study shows most of them are under 12. There will not be a classroom in New York City that does not feel the impact of this epidemic by either having a child with HIV in the class or a child from a family with HIV in the class. The people who know best tell us these kids could cripple the city's already crumbling foster care system. But for better or worse, only 10 or 20 percent of them will end up in foster care. The rest will likely go to live with grandmothers, with aunts or family members, or worse, end up on the streets. The, um cost to society of jails and remedial institutions and to paying the price of all the antisocial behavior that will inevitably be the result if, if these youngsters are not given an opportunity, we will pay that price. After my mother passed, I went on the top of the roof. I almost tried to commit suicide. Then I had to think that I had to take care of my daughter. So that's why I'm here today, or else I wouldn't be here. Where does this go? 17-year-old Kyla Taylor's mother died last spring at the age of 36. She was Kyla's role model, idol, and best friend. In fact, her only friend. But she never told Kyla she had AIDS. Kyla found out about it some months later. Now with that, sir. In the battle to survive and to provide for her own young daughter, Kyla left the older brother who used drugs and abused her and the younger sister who insisted on running in the streets. What family there had been was now shattered. City officials worry that the family structure in our neighborhoods will be devastated and the system won't even notice it. There are a lot of courageous people in our world. Vilma Santiago is one of them. She lives in this housing project in East Harlem. She's almost 50. She's a mother and a grandmother, and she has AIDS. I know what it is to be rejected by loved ones. I know what it is to be rejected by friends. I know what it is to be rejected by the church. Vilma has been living with AIDS for eight years now. She tells everyone she has the disease and refuses to bow to the inevitable. She counsels others and keeps counsel with her family. I have this disease and my family got this disease. They're not living with it, but I am. They, they are affected with the disease because their mother's living with them. The cost of treating Americans with AIDS and HIV is expected to jump almost 50% over the next few years to more than $15 billion. And that is just treatment. No one pretends there will be a cure. But Vilma Santiago is not thinking about a cure. She simply does not want to become a statistic. Before I leave this world, I want them to remember people with A's got faces. And I'm a face. I'm not a number. The definition of AIDS has been broadened to include some additional illnesses. And that means the city's insurance and screening costs are certain to increase. That means each of us will pay more to contain and combat AIDS and there might be fewer hospital beds for those of us who have other diseases. Tomorrow, adolescents, teenagers who hide their faces and who hope someone will find a cure so they can continue living with AIDS.
When we come back in just a moment, shopping for tea, it can be a confusing experience, but enjoying the soothing blend can be an art if you know the right moves. And Brooklyn's own world boxing champ, Riddick Bowe, weighs in to help deal a knockout blow to hunger in Somalia. We'll have his mission of mercy with Scott Clark next in sports. While most of us are asleep, millions are going to work, fighting their body clocks. Tonight, Eyewitness News anchor Victoria Corderi investigates, could their lack of sleep place you in danger? When we try and go against uh, this biological rhythm, we run into trouble. How long can a doctor fight sleep before courting disaster? Your thinking isn't as sharp as it, it might be with, uh, with some proper rest. Watch this special report, No Time to Sleep, tonight on Eyewitness News at 11, right here on Channel 7. During the Dodge President's Week sale, we'll do anything it takes. Starting with $250 cash back on Caravan. Now, $350. How about $500? $2,000 total savings on Ram 150. Hey, I really like you. Over $4,100. Plus, immediate delivery on the spot financing, low down payment. At the Dodge President's Week sale. Bally's is offering our pay-as-you-go program at the lowest enrollment fee of the year, $49. Once you join, you pay only $15 a month for as long as you want. No outrageous membership fees, no long-term commitments, just $15 a month for aerobics, swimming, jogging, and the most advanced equipment available, including our 30-minute workout. Join Bally's Jack LaLanne's pay-as-you-go program now. An offer like this won't last forever. Call 1-800-WORKOUT. Do your bills arrive by the bag full? If you're a homeowner, call Statewide Capital at 1-800-DIAL-CASH and consolidate them into one low-cost home equity loan. Even if you've been turned down at the bank, you can lower your monthly payments. The interest may be tax deductible. Then pull just one bill out of the bag. Make just one low payment. For a better tomorrow, dial cash today. Call Statewide Capital now at 1-800-DIAL-CASH. It's President's Month at your Tri-Honda dealer. Get a great deal on a new Accord. If you've heard of Washington or Lincoln, either one of them, you qualify. Boston Sea Party was a very famous one, but New York has one too. We found it in Chinatown. Tea time with Mark and Ellen Lee. A Chinese tea ceremony. Tea is a delightful part of the Chinese culture, and Tim Fleischer found a story now that suits him to a tea. A master of the Chinese tea ceremony, Ellen Lee likes to think of this rather as the fine art of tea drinking. And this is a Chinese way to show their hospitality. From green tea to the flavorful oolong to the various grades of black teas. Mark and Ellen Lee are fourth generation tea merchants from Taiwan who carry dozens of varieties in the Ten Ren Tea Store here in Chinatown. Enjoyment though is what the Lees firmly believe is what is so very important. If you know how to enjoy your tea, Ellen says, then you know how to enjoy your life. You want to enjoy the flavor. You want to appreciate the, the fragrance of this tea. And Chinese, they've been drinking tea for a few thousand years already. And finally, they found this is the proper way to prepare the good tea. Much of that comes from Lu Yu, who wrote more than a thousand years ago what's considered the definitive book detailing the fine art of tea drinking. Such as uh, how to manufacture the tea, how to grow the tea, how to uh, appreciate yeah, appreciation of tea. That especially holds true when buying rare, expensive teas. This sells for $130 a pound. Yes. Oh, the yeah. aroma is wonderful. For, for oh, them. yes. And after you drink it, you will feel sweet in your tongue. And many still believe that teas hold a medicinal value. JP buys the ginseng tea. It's good for energy, you know, and I just find it very refreshing. This tea is good for your stomach, uh, good for your health. So the viewpoint is the health. But the Chinese, they like this just for the, you know, uh, quenchy thirsty. Happy New Year. Tim Fleischer, <laughs> Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Okay, well, Riddick Bowe is the world boxing champ. Why not go see the world? Here's Scott Clark. Thank you, Bill. Bon voyage, Big Daddy. Heavyweight boxing champion Riddick Bowe just about to take off now on a goodwill tour across the seas, but Bowe's manager, Rock Newman, is working on a possible bout with Evander Holyfield for Bowe for bidding bye-bye. I'm not sure what the results are going to be. Um, I don't know right now what, what the next move will be for Riddick. So rematch or no rematch with Holyfield, Riddick Bowe's concern right now is not in the ring. Mark Stevens has more. Riddick Bowe's latest opponent isn't in the boxing ring. 
He's joining the forces in the fight against hunger in Somalia. Today, Riddick helped load up the supplies for their trip to Africa, and he'll rendezvous next week with AmeriCare volunteers to help in their distribution in Somalia. As heavyweight champion, with that comes responsibility, and I feel like, you know, there are certain things that we should do. Uh, for myself, I feel like I've been blessed, and uh, this is a way of giving something back. Besides the goodwill stop in Mogadishu to help the people in Somalia, the champ also has scheduled a meeting with Nelson Mandela in Johannesburg and a private audience with the Pope. I mean, you made the big time, Bob. Well, I guess you can say I'm doing pretty good for myself. I just envision that picture of Riddick and the Pope together, and it sort of crosses all barriers. As the world champ becomes a world traveler, Mark Stevens, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. All right, from boxing to basketball, the Knicks were thinking that they would get the injured Rolando Blackman back after the All-Star break, but Blackman, who's nursing a sprained knee, says it may be three weeks or more before he's ready to play again. So get a load of one of the men filling in. The rookie, Hubert Davis. Hot Hubert Davis last night. It was against lowly Dallas, but you finish 9-11 from the field. That's an accomplishment. Yeah, he had 18. The starters got a breather. 117-87. They're against Charlotte tonight, the Knicks. At the middle end, Chuck Daly drew an ejection with his team struggling against the Bucks last night, but the boot gave his club a boost. Chris Morris with the rejection on Blue Edwards, and here come the Nets. Derek to Draza to Derek. Coleman with 27 points, 16 rebounds. Nets win their sixth straight home game. To hockey news, the New York Islanders continue to surge on, now tied with the Devils for fourth place in the Patrick Division and just one point back of the Rangers. That after Benoit Hogue and the Islanders blew Edmonton away last night. That after Hogue took a penalty shot with the game tied at one. He skates in, he shoots, he scores. Hogue, one of seven Islanders to get on the board in a 7-2 to two victory. And finally, hey, Lawrence Taylor. Your old coach is gone, the Giants are a team in transition, and you're at just about the end of your career. So what are you going to do next? Going to be you're going to Disney World? I can make it happen. I can make it happen. Well, rub my lamp and call me Genie. Yes, LT did make it happen, playing the Genie in Aladdin for the folks at Disney World, and we hear he got all his wishes for showing his wares, all the golf he can play, and all the dummies he can muster up to get. You know, I do a lot of different things, you know, I'm not... Uh, just one dimensional. Um, part of that just having is just having fun, and I have fun better than anybody else I know. You are correct, sir. I'm Scott Clark, and that's it for sports. Bill? Thank you, Jeannie. Just ahead, get ready to bundle up because the cold air is coming back. Sam Champion with the Accurate Weather Forecast in just a moment. Dear Lexus, my LS400 is great, but I have a suggestion.